Welcome to Business Insights. Uh, my name is Tony Loop, and this is actually the short version. It's going to be the short version for the Bridgestone slash Firestone uh, case study. <clears throat> the reason this is a short version, and I've never felt the need to actually do two videos uh, to describe one situation, but this is so unique that I, I, I'm compelled to do this. Uh, I went, there's a question as to the authenticity of a coupon I got online uh, regarding an oil change at a Firestone Complete Auto Care Center. Now I went in and the manager made me feel as though like I was out pirating these coupons and that I'm trying to scam or steal from him. And, and it hurt my feelings, it did. I'm a sensitive guy. <laughs> but... Um, so, but he, and he kept reiterating this phrase, pirated coupons. Now, maybe there was some reason, maybe they've done it before, maybe it was an attempt to upsell, I don't really know. <clears throat> but then there was another customer who got involved. And if you watch the other video, I go into all this detail, but the short version is the custom, other customer got involved. And it became this whole kind of a match between me and her as well as then me and him. And I was just trying to get across to him to understand that one, uh, you know, he explained that, oh, there's only the Firestone website or the print coupons. I said, right. How am I supposed to know as a customer about whether a coupon is legitimate or not? It looked pretty legitimate to me. So, and I called to schedule the appointment and I mentioned the price and, and it sounded like a great deal. Um, you know, and, and I rushed to get there. I got there on time. And then there was all this nonsense. And um, <clears throat> the takeaway, and then at that point, I, I came home. I immediately jumped on Firestone's website. I was, you know, I, I sent him this email. I said, hey, look, this, you know, this customer service was terrible. For one, never let another customer start interacting. That's just going to end badly. No matter how, you know, it will always end badly when you let a second customer argue with, a, with the first customer regarding something going on in the business. That's definitely not a good situation. Um, <clears throat> and you know, obviously the first one was, there was a hundred different ways the situation had been handled. But there was absolutely no reason to make me feel like I was doing something wrong when it's not my responsibility to control the marketing that gets done by a company. Whether they intended the marketing or not, and the way he explained it to me was that he had seen these coupons before. So apparently they knew that these coupons were out there or that there's fake coupons out there. And it's their job as a company to manage that. Whatever the corporate policy is, uh, however they want to handle it, it's their responsibility. It's not my responsibility. Um, to make you know to make sure that the coupon and, and books are good uh, when I come in for service if it's not it's not I respect that I understand that um, but let's find a solution and move on good customer service <clears throat> so any need to say I was I was angry I was especially angry because the customer had the other customer was flipping me off as I was leaving we got into it <laughs> um, and that just, it, it, to have a customer stand in your showroom and making obscene gestures to anyone, whether they deserve it or not, is so, it just makes your company look terrible. <clears throat> so again, that's why he should have controlled the other customer and, and, and mitigated that. Anyway, moving on. The, I get home. I file the thing. <clears throat> you know, I'm getting ready to eat. I, actually, I was getting ready to do this video. And um, I get a phone call. I'm like, okay, I answer. And it is the assistant district manager, Stephen Lyons. The guy, I'm like, really? You're calling me? That is awesome customer service. It was incredible. And it started turning this whole thing around. And he starts telling me about how Firestone puts the commitment out there to take care of their customer. If someone writes in a complaint, how everybody in the company, like the CEO and all these people see this type of an email. And they will ask and they'll ask what the follow-up is. And it shows such a commitment that it is just, it's an awesome culture 
a corporate culture, if the CEO and the VP for that region is actually involved in this, then, then we have to give Bridgestone slash Firestone a huge, huge respect. Um, because when the CEO is involved, that develops within every employee, you know, the desire to go that extra step. You know, and it's like 6, 30, 7 o'clock. The, <clears throat> so he calls and he explains, and so now this whole, what was going to be a huge internet bashing of Firestone, a complete auto care center, was now turning around to a perfect example of how real customer service and customer service complaints get handled. And it was beautiful. To go the next step, he then calls back. Um, and I got all these conversations, uh, not the first one, but the next couple, I actually have on video in the long version. And so he calls back again with another store manager and says, look, I, I know you don't want to go talk to this other guy again and get all into that. So we'll let you go to this other store and we're going to take care of you and we're going to help you out and we apologize for anything. And the other store manager was on the line and he said, look, tell me what's good for you. You can come in, we'll work this out. And I was like, you know, look, I, whenever you got a free time, I'll come down. I'm not a piggy, and I'm not writing it for free. Um, but so that was great. And then someone must have called this guy because the, the original store manager called in. He called, then he calls me. And again, that's, I got it recorded. And um, he's like, look, and I don't know if he was falling on his sword to the company and it was a fake coupon or whether it's a real coupon and he made an honest mistake or he didn't make an honest mistake. But either way, he admitted or he stepped forward and said, look, it was a misunderstanding, I am sorry. Which was, you know, having him call was really cool. It's really appreciated. You know, it makes me as a customer feel better. And then, which <clears throat> was the icing on the cake, makes this entire thing beautiful, was that he says, I'll, we'll take him on his word, he says he called the other customer and explained that the coupon was legitimate. So it, it, it kind of put her, you know, now she has to understand that, okay, then she was probably a little out of place when really she had no reason to get involved in the conversation and he should have kept her out, but either way. But so now, well, I have to give Firestone a huge amount of credit for the way they've handled this entire situation. It, it's incredible. The level of customer service and the level of commitment that has been displayed by Firestone, the auto complete auto care centers, um, is pretty impressive. I, I have to give them that. I want to keep this under 10 minutes, um, and then you can see the long version if you want, <laughs> and you can hear the conversations. I don't, I don't know if you can hear them or not. Um, I gotta put it all together, um, but I want to get this one out there and just say Firestone, great job. Uh, keep up the good work, and and I really hope that this shows the type of commitment. Your entire company, every one of your locations has uh, to all of your customers. Um, you really took a bad situation and turned it around 180 degrees. And uh, I, I give you guys all the props in the world. Good job. Uh, so the takeaway is you can any business situation that's bad can be turned around and turned into a positive. As long as we're all willing to give a little and we're all willing to... Uh, to provide just good customer service and uh, take care of the customer. That's really what it's all about. So good jobs, Firestone. That's Business Insights. I'm Tony Loop. Thank you.